As of October 2024, XP Pen has five drawing tablets in their Artist Pro Gen 2 series of pen displays. In this video, I will be talking about the Artist Pro 16 Gen 2 model number MD160QH. To get right to the point, I really do like this tablet. Yes, a Cintiq Pro is better, but I think this tablet is very good. And as of October 2024, it is the 16-inch pen display that I recommend most often. I think the drawing experience is very good, but there are a few things you should be aware of. This tablet does exhibit some diagonal wobble. I found it to be easy to correct with application smoothing and stabilization. The X3 Pro pen is very good. However, in my testing across multiple models, I did find significant variation in the pressure range. Also, there is a little bit of confusion about whether the tablet includes a 3-in-1 cable. Here are my standard disclaimers for these types of videos. Again, I want to stress the independence of my investigation into these tablets. This video is a summary. If you want more details, consult my written notes for this tablet. The link is in the video description. Here's what the tablet looks like from the front. And here's the view from the back. This is a list of what's in the box that I found on the XP Pen website. Do note that it says there is a 3-in-1 cable that's included. We will talk a lot more about this 3-in-1 cable and whether it is included later in this video. The active area is about 13.5 inches by 8.5 inches. This gives us a diagonal size of exactly 16 inches. Compared to other pen displays, it's slightly larger than a Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 and slightly smaller than a Wacom Cintiq Pro 17. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. This is very uncommon for pen displays. The vast majority of pen displays are 16 by 9. In practice, I found that the 16 by 10 aspect ratio feels similar enough to the 16 by 9. It did not feel unusual at all. In fact, I kind of liked it because this aspect ratio gives it a larger height than you would expect for a 16 inch tablet. And so it feels bigger than it really is. Here are the display specs. For now, I'll just focus on a couple of them. The resolution is 2560 by 1600. So this is not a 4K display, but it is noticeably higher resolution than a 1080p display. In any case, I felt it had enough resolution that it did not feel overly pixelated. Some people tell me that on Mac OS, resolutions like this that aren't exactly 4K or HD have problems with Mac OS. So if you are using Mac OS and want to get this tablet, you might want to investigate how well macOS works with resolutions like this. For my part, it worked fine. I didn't have any issues. The tablet comes with the X3 Pro Pen. This is a standard EMR pen with two buttons and an eraser. It's incredibly similar to the shape and size of the Wacom Pro Pen 2. There are actually three pens in the X3 Pro series. The X3 Pro, the X3 Pro Slim, and the X3 Pro Roller. All three work with this tablet. I have five pens from the X3 Pro series, and I performed some basic testing on them for pressure response. In my measurements, two of the five pens had very good maximum pressure. The other three were okay in my classification. The blue line represents the pen that came with the tablet. I've circled its maximum pressure in red so that you can see it more easily. It's a little bit above 400 gram force. XP Pen clearly states that the X3 Pro pens should have a maximum pressure of about 400 gram force. This is a chart they published on a web page for the Artist 22 Plus. So they clearly state this. So I was a little disappointed that some of these X3 Pro pens did not meet this bar. XP Pen states that the initial activation force should be about three gram force. And subjectively, I would agree that's what the pen felt like. I don't do measurements of initial activation force because I'm really not good at measuring it, so I have to rely on my subjective feeling of them. Here's the XP Pen tablet driver. There's a drop down here that controls which pen you're customizing. If you click on that drop down, you'll notice it actually gives you only two options X3 Pro and X3 Pro Roller. However, we know there are three different pens in the series, so how does this work? In my testing, it seems that if you have it set to X3 Pro, those settings will apply to the X3 Pro pens and the X3 Pro Slim pens. The pen came in this really nice case that has a nib remover and felt and plastic nibs. When I talk about the drawing experience, 
That means I'm taking into account the holistic view. Everything about the pen, the tablet, and the screen. Ultimately, what I'm trying to evaluate is, does it feel good to draw with this tablet, and can I produce quality strokes? And yes, overall, I am very happy with the drawing experience. I drew for about six months with this tablet, and the pressure worked well, and I drew a lot of art with it, mostly line work. As I mentioned, there is a bit of diagonal wobble, which can be controlled. Diagonal wobble is an effect where there is a periodic oscillation to the stroke, especially as the stroke is moving at 45 degrees. And that wobble will disappear when the pen is moving perfectly horizontally or vertically. These are the results of my diagonal wobble testing. Each line is about 10 centimeters. They were drawn at 2.5, 5, and 10 centimeters per second. I would rate this tablet as okay for diagonal wobble. There is a moderate amount of diagonal wobble, and to be honest, for a tablet that is targeting a professional audience, it is more than I expect. And I do urge XP Pen to do better in the future. That being said, this amount of wobble did not interfere with my drawing. I was easily able to control it with brush smoothing and stabilization in apps like Clip Studio Paint and Krita. In comparison, I found that this tablet has noticeably more wobble than a Cintiq Pro 16, a Cintiq Pro 22, or a Huion Canvas Pro 19. At really low pressure, and especially when the brush is big and the pen is held perfectly vertically, pens can sometimes do really weird things. This happens to even the best pens on the market. And it's one of those things that you can make any tablet do if you try hard enough. But in the vast majority of cases, you'll never run into it or even notice. In any case, this tablet and pen did pretty good at this. I didn't notice a lot of strange artifacts at all, even under super low pressure under those specific conditions I mentioned. And this is typical for pen displays. I think it is due to the fact that pen displays have less actual physical texture than a typical pen tablet. I found this tablet to be very similar to the Cintiq Pro 16, 22, and the Huion Canvas Pro 19. Pressure scan rate testing means draw a bunch of lines really, really fast and see if the tablet captures all those strokes. In other words, the tablet shouldn't miss any strokes. And this tablet did a great job. I drew 50 strokes as fast as I possibly could, and it captured all 50. Tablets have to do some extra processing to correctly identify where the tip of the pen is if you're tilting the pen. This is called tilt compensation. No tablet is perfect at this, and probably you would never even notice this with a pen tablet. But with a pen display, there's a screen, and so it's much more obvious how well tilt compensation is working. Here are some photos showing how tilt compensation appeared for me. Overall, I think it did okay. I did see some minor displacement at 45 degrees, especially when I was tilting the pen to the right. But I thought it was totally acceptable. It did not hinder my drawing at all. In comparison, I think the Wacom Cintiq Pro does a better job. It has less displacement of the pointer. You should be aware, I did run into some people on Reddit who have the same tablet, and they said that their tablets exhibited much more displacement than what I observed, and they weren't happy. So if you're going to get this tablet, you may want to test its tilt compensation as soon as you unbox it. Pointer lag is the visual difference between the tip of the pen and where the computer thinks the tip of the pen is, as usually indicated by the mouse pointer. And this is when the pen is moving. All drawing tablets, even the best ones, have some amount of pointer lag. And pointer lag is not very obvious in a pen tablet, but it is there. But with a pen display, it's very obvious, because you can see the visual difference. This tablet had typical pointer lag for a pen display. In comparison, Apple iPads still have the least pointer lag I've ever seen. And one day I'd like to understand why that is. In my testing, this tablet seems to have a tiny bit more pointer lag than a Wacom Cintiq Pro. But I use a lot of tablets, so I'm not sure most people would notice this. This tablet has an etched glass surface which provides a nice surface texture. The pen does not feel slippery when drawing on it at all. I felt like it had a little less texture than a Wacom Cintiq Pro using the Pro Pen 2. And likewise, I felt it had a little less texture than the Huion Canvas Pro 19 using the PW600 pen. This pen does not have auxiliary inputs, so there are no express keys, buttons, dials, or sliders. The tablet does come bundled with the ACK05 shortcut remote. This has 10 buttons and a dial. 
I never use these remotes that come with tablets, so I have no further comment on this remote. And I may have mentioned before, instead of these kinds of remotes, I use a third-party device called a Tourbox, and it provides many more inputs. And that Tourbox device provides many more options for auxiliary inputs. That means it has a lot of buttons. There are two USB ports at the top edge of this tablet. Both ports are recessed into the tablet. So be aware that many random USB-C cables will not fit inside. This tablet does support a single USB-C cable connection to your computer. This means your computer has to provide the display signal, data, and power. Sometimes a computer does not provide enough power. So in this case, you can use another cable they provide that plugs into a power adapter. The single USB-C connection option worked really well for me. It worked with every computer I tested. I tested it with an M3 MacBook Pro, a Surface Pro 8, and a mini PC. Here's a public service announcement. If you want to use a single USB connection for your computer, please remember your USB-C port must support DisplayPort Alt Mode, it must be able to transmit and receive data, and it must be able to supply enough power for the tablet. Not all USB ports meet these requirements. Things are simpler though, if you have a Thunderbolt 3 or a Thunderbolt 4 or a USB 4 port, all of which use a USB-C connector. Those ports will supply everything you need. However, sometimes it's not clear what USB-C port you have. So you may need to contact your manufacturer. And please verify that your USB-C port meets the requirements before you purchase this tablet. Now we get to the topic of the three-in-one cable. And this gets a little confusing. Currently on the XP Pen website, it says that this tablet includes a three-in-one cable. However, the story is a little mixed up. When this tablet was announced, XP Pen said it would not come with a three-in-one cable, but they said if you did a pre-order, then they would ship you the three-in-one cable also. After it was released, when you purchased the tablet, it did not come with a three-in-one cable. And you can find many videos on YouTube or comments on Reddit where people clearly say they did not get a three-in-one cable. And in fact, I ordered the tablet and I did not get a three-in-one cable. But now, as I mentioned, on their website, it says a three-in-one cable is included. And I've seen several videos and talked to people who have received a three-in-one cable. However, the problem is if you order this tablet from a retailer, let's say Amazon, it is not entirely clear if the tablet is coming with a three-in-one cable or not. They might have older inventory that does not have that cable. So this is why it's very confusing. For the pre-orders, XP Pen included this three-in-one cable, model number ACW05. However, the problem is, as of October 2024, if I go to the XP Pen website, I cannot search and find any model with this name, ACW05. However, if I go to the XP Pen store, I will see they do have this three-in-one cable. And if you read the description, it clearly says that it works with the Artist Pro 16 Gen 2. It is not, however, clear if this is the same model as the one I showed you just a second ago. It doesn't show the model number anywhere. So at the end of all this, if you need to use a three-in-one cable because you have an HDMI port, you really need to double check that the cable is included in the box before you buy this tablet or be prepared to buy a three-in-one cable separately. If you need help answering this question, I ask you to contact XP Pen customer support. I don't want you to have to order this tablet and then be frustrated because you didn't get the cable that you need. Here are the color gamuts that XP Pen says this tablet supports. I'm not a color expert and I don't do independent verification of these numbers, so I'm presenting what they say. XP Pen says the brightness of this tablet is 250 nits. I use this tablet at 100% brightness. In comparison, I use my Cintiq Pro 22, which supports 300 nits at 50% brightness. But part of the reason I only use 50% is fan noise. If I set the Cintiq Pro to 100% brightness, I really don't like how much fan noise there is. To avoid glare, this tablet uses etched glass. And the etched glass does a fantastic job. I think it does a better job of reducing glare than the Cintiq Pro 22. I found it very similar to the Huion Canvas Pro 19. One of the side effects of anti-glare treatments is that you get this anti-glare sparkle. This is a kind of rainbow sparkling effect, and some people are very sensitive to it. 
Some tablets have a little bit of it, and some tablets have a lot. I found that this tablet has a low amount of anti-glare sparkle. I could really only see it when I got very close to the tablet, like maybe my eyes were four inches away. In comparison, I found that this tablet just had slightly more anti-glare sparkle than the Cintiq Pro 16 and 22 and the Huion Canvas Pro 19. Pixels on this display were clear and well delineated. In comparison, I found this display's pixels to be slightly sharper than the Cintiq Pro 22 and noticeably sharper than the Huion Canvas Pro 19. That tablet tends to look a little soft. Parallax is an apparent inaccuracy due to viewing angles. This is because the pen is not drawing on the display panel. It's drawing on top of the glass, which is on top of the display panel. This tablet has a very low amount of parallax. And that's good. I would say it's on par with the Cintiq Pro 22. But no pen display, including this one, is as good as the iPad Pro. Pen tracking accuracy was very good with this tablet. The pointer stayed under the tip of the pen. There was some slight deviation in the corners and edges, which is normal. And accuracy was good out of the box. I did not have to calibrate it. XP Pen provides some accuracy numbers for the center and the corners, and their numbers matched my experience. In comparison, I would say the Cintiq Pro had slightly better corner accuracy. I found this tablet to be similar to the Huion Canvas Pro 19. There are two folding legs on the back of this tablet that provide a little bit of an angle for when you want to draw. These legs are quite convenient, though if you need more of an angle, you might want to get a stand. This tablet does not have any VESA mounting holes on the back so you cannot use a stand that depends on VESA mounting. And this tablet does not come with its own stand. If you purchase this tablet on the XP Pen online store, the store recommends the ACS05 stand. I generally don't like stands like that. I think a better choice would probably be the AC41 stand. I myself use the stand that came with the Sense Labs Display 16. That stand looks very, very similar to the AC41. This tablet is perfectly silent, I love that, and there are no fans to cause any noise. In terms of heat, overall it was good, the tablet stays cool. I did find it's cool on the right side, with a slight warmth on the left side. It was also cool near the USB-C ports. That ends my evaluation of this tablet. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or want to share some feedback. The link to my written notes is in the video description. As I learn more, I'll update those notes and please make use of the online community. There are many drawing tablet subreddits, including XP Pen. And actually, I am now the mod for XP Pen, Huion, and the drawing tablet subreddit. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this video.